Okay, yeah. it is National Joke Day. Mm. I don't know if you knew that. Did not. Yeah. And so we're going to get specific, and it's knock knock jokes. So <laughs> oh. go ahead and your the best corny. knock knock joke. <laughs> Knock you knock. the corny? I think I well. Justin has the best <laughs> knock knock joke of the three of us, so, so he's going to oh, give us right. the joke. Okay. This right. is the one I, I told my daughter, and she thought it was great, so it's really cheesy. Uh, knock knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Orange. Orange. Orange too. Too. Aren't you glad I didn't say banana? <laughs> <laughs> Very it's an oldie, but it's a classic. Classic. I love that. And that, ladies classic. and gentlemen, is the only clean joke <laughs> we have oh. for you. Hey, the, rest, the rest is for the Late Late Show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have knock-knock jokes? Uh, I honestly, so. I, you know, I don't tell I, jokes, I don't. Yeah. and I'm not even a good joke laugher. I have to think about them. I'm terrible Before for Before you could. I'm so like, oh, like, yeah, that is funny. I usually get them pretty quick, no, but I don't, note I don't to, tell note them. Note to self, don't tell Ursula no. jokes. No. Yes, you want a reaction, yeah. right. Oh, I'll get back to you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thanks, we'll guys. We'll take it from here. So what's your best knock-knock joke? Is it going to be one of those classics? Mm -hmm. Orange you glad I didn't say banana? Mm -hmm. Something like that? Let us I know. I can't wait to see these. They're going to be so cute and corny. And the ones you tell the kids are, are the best. So yeah. I've got one, too. Okay. Knock-knock. Who's there? To. To who? No, to whom? To whom? <laughs> of course you'd do that one. <laughs> That's for all the English teachers out there, so. <laughs> oh, so let us know your favorite corny yeah. knock-knock joke at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll get a good laugh when we air them a little uh, later on I, in the show. We are talking snacks. Oh, cool yes. Snacks and healthy mm -hmm. for the kids. And Elizabeth Johnson, though, says she has the perfect secret to making them taste very good. First of all, knock-knock mm -hmm. jokes. What's knock here? knock. Who's there? Who's there? Actually, I think it goes the other way around. No, I thought no. you. Oh, oh, yeah. oh knock, okay. knock. Okay. Who's, Who's there? there? Okay, eat. Eat. Eat who? Eat, who? eat your veggies. Ah! <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, well, Elizabeth Johnson from to... Farm Table is here with some, with a great way and a great after-school snack for kids, right? So every parent is challenged. Go ahead and okay. steer that. Mm -hmm. Every parent is challenged, how do I get more veggies into my kid's Ooh. diet? And oftentimes, we don't really understand why they like certain vegetables and why mm -hmm. they have aversions to other veggies. Mm -hmm. But one of the great things that I like to do is I like to grab pre-cut veggies at the grocery store okay. that are already ready for you, okay? And what we're going to do here is what we talked about in the break, the Maillard reaction, okay? Okay. So here we have, we're searing the vegetables just like you would a piece of meat. On a dry skillet. On a dry skillet. Okay. And here's, here's how, it, how it ends up being, ah, okay? Okay. okay, so that's what it looks like afterwards. You can see that little bit of sear on there. We've got Brussels sprouts mm -hmm. and what else in here? We have Brussels sprouts, we have kohlrabi, which is something nobody even knows about. Okay. Uh, we have kale okay. stems, we have kale. And one of the great things about this is that it, it uses all the parts of the plant, so we avoid food waste. Okay. It they package it up like that, and then that way, you know, if it's not going to be the pretty leaves and all that for the salad, it's going into a, a, basically a taco shell, and um, it, it's the good stuff still. It's, it's very perfect. edible. And it's this perfect. is less than five minutes, right? Less and than five is minutes. Of the essence. No, okay. it certainly is. And then turkey bacon, literally sear it, sear it in the same pan. Go ahead and take your turkey okay. bacon, put okay. it right there on the same pan. All okay. Right. We've already, uh, the, the sweet potatoes are optional. You can add those. My kids love sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. We Most love Most kids do. Okay. A little bit of salt. There we go. Okay. There we go. And then once this finishes cooking, we're gonna add. We're gonna finish it off with a little bit of coconut oil and maple syrup, which I've combined together. So you can go ahead and drizzle that on there. Coconut oil and maple syrup. Well, Ooh, the the maple syrup is bad. actually a, a, a healthful sweetener. Okay. Oh. And if we add just a little bit of sweet, they're gonna be more prone to eat of veggies. Course. Yeah, and and of course. And of course, coconut oil, oil can be is so really beneficial. Important. Absolutely. It's got a lot of good medium chain fatty acids that are good for kids' brains when they're trying to uh, when, when they're trying to study. So, and remember things like the May... may the Mayard See, reaction. I need Mayard. coconut oil. <laughs> okay. And then you go the exponential on the um, um, umami. 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 Uh -huh. Umami. 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 Really umami. Such an educational yeah. program here. For so, those of you who okay. missed the 1250, you're like, what? And, and so and now we're going to assemble. We're going to assemble with these three ingredients right here, just tortillas. like I have over here. And once uh -huh. again, the same skillet that you've done all this in, so you don't have a big mess or big cleanup or anything like Absolutely. that. And you can keep this in the fridge like this, too, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, okay. how do we assemble? And so, we're gonna, what we're you're going to do is you're going to take already the, the, already, uh, mm -hmm. the already cooked Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. You're going to put them inside the, the uh, tortillas. Uh -huh. You're going to top with the bacon and then the sweet potatoes. And then drizzle with a little bit of like the, uh, with a little bit of the madam? maple syrup. Top and the sweet thing. potatoes, this is, I'm, they're almost like sweet potato french fries. This is one of the best things that you can put in your mouth, right? It one really is. Foods. It's actually not a potato. It's not a tuber. It's part of the um, Morning Glory family. And, it is? Um, it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I always oh, thought it was a potato. No. Oh. 
And it's so Once important again. to show kids healthy eating habits, right? You're a mom yourself. Uh, absolutely. And if need be, if that wasn't sweet enough, you could put actually a little bit more of the maple syrup and the, the coconut oil on there for these great little taco snacks. Correct. Okay. And this is not one of those where, um, you know, cookies and milk might give that quick sugar high and then about an hour later when it's homework mm. time, they're going to get the, the sugar crash. This will kind of keep them going. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. How about the snap peas? The snap peas are also great. My kids love edamame, mm -hmm. so the snap peas are kind of like a fresh version of edamame. So we're going to take the same, the, the same principle that we applied to the Brussels sprouts. We're going right. to apply it to the, uh, we're going to apply it to the the snap peas. A little bit of salt and voila, super and easy. That's it. Okay. All done and ready and to go. And the nice thing about the snap peas too, the package that they came in, they don't have the little string right there on the, the seam of it. Like uh, snap peas or snow peas or something like that, and you got to peel that off that little string thing there. So, okay. Okay. And uh, Farm Table Restaurant, you got quite an honor. Thank you. Recently, we were voted uh, best vegetarian restaurant by the Critics Choice of the San Antonio Express News, okay. and we will be opening seven days a week starting September one. Located yeah. where? Located inside the Radius Building, across from the Tobin Center. Okay. okay. Yeah. And parents in downtown, you guys do a, a lunch? We do. Mm -hmm. We do. And we also have all sorts of to-go food that you can buy in bulk for the week. And uh, we actually have some, some local schools that are buying lunches, uh, uh, cold lunches for, for us, for their, for, for their students. Oh, Fantastic. that's great. Right. Elizabeth Johnson, thank you very much. And for more information on these recipes, that is really healthy. And that sweetness in there and those sweet potatoes, kids are going to love it. Uh, more information on this and Farm Table, go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on salive.com. Are you ready for some fresh new gear for the school year? It's always fun getting new stuff like right? that. Whenever I get new clothes, I always smell them for some reason. I don't know why. You would. I do. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> anyway, David takes us inside a local spot that custom designs T-shirts, and they sell some really sweet kicks as well. Take a look. David Ellis with SA Live and Guys Guide. Well, for Guys Guide this week, it's back to school. So I want to take you out to a place where you can get fresh gear for the new year. I'm talking about Unique Knits. They're a store located right off of Broadway and Houston Street downtown. And they got some really cool clothes in there and shoes. And we're going to go inside and check it out. Local clothing designer Gilbert Glaster is the owner and creator of Unique Knits Clothing Store. Well, I'd always been into clothing. I wanted to create something that was fun and colorful. Glaster is a San Antonio native and is proud to have a shop in the city that he loves. One of my favorites who was dedicated to the city of San Antonio is our countdown city, T, here. We just stayed on Lackland Air Force Base. We lived on, uh, we lived on base and uh, from my fifth grade year all the way to my senior year. He created the brand in 2005 during his time in business school at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. I didn't know that I was into designing and creating certain things until like I actually just changed my focus. I wanted a brand, but I kind of wanted to create like a Disney, but of our time. Glaster's dreams of opening up his own shop became a reality when he was offered the opportunity to sell his own merchandise at a Bismarck he meet and greet at a local store. I was going into different stores here in San Antonio and I was wanting to pitch my brand to them, but it just wasn't ready. One day, store owner was having a Bismarck key meet and greet and uh, he asked me, hey, do you want to set up a small booth in the back? That opportunity led to success for Glaster and his brand and allowed him to open up his own shop. A lot of the stuff where all this comes from is a lot of the stuff that I was putting myself around at that time. So just a lot of the other brands that were out in New York and L.A. and stuff like that, I followed them, but I still wanted to create my own, my own path. The store sells merchandise branded with his characters he created as part of a comic book series. The girl character, and she is actually my daughter, in, in character form from the comic book series. Logo tees here, this one's called the Paint paint Splatter. Another one of our characters, uh, Tigo. What makes this store even more unique is that they have collectible kicks, like Jordans, LeBrons, Kobe's, and Yeezys, all for an affordable price. Thus getting out, people are starting to find out about us even more, so a lot of the sneakerheads and collectors, they're starting to 
pretty much coming. So if you want to stand out from the crowd and wear something that's made by a local designer, you got to come out to Unique Knits Clothing Store. Well, Gilbert, thank you so much. And for you guys to get some fresh gear this year, you got to come out to Unique Knits. They got really cool stuff. All their stuff's branded and it's custom branding. So you're not going to find this stuff anywhere else. It truly is a unique store. So you come out here, they got great deals for the summertime and for back to school, 15% off for all the kids and for some of the college kids going back to school too. And you got to get out here quickly because all this stuff's getting, but it's just flying off the shelf. It's just flying off the shelf out here. For SA Live, I'm David Elder. I love the t-shirt. Isn't and that cool? Wallet. That is just adorable as And that, that's his daughter. So he actually designed it based off of his daughter, and that's her little teddy bear. And this is a whole comic book series that he developed around them. And there's other characters that are involved. And he has t-shirts developed all for them. So it's all these different graphic tees that he has out there. And including, I mean, the shirts, yeah. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They also have hats. Mm -hmm. And the hats are great. This is their logo as well that they have on there. Everything custom designed by them there at the store. And as you can see what Fiona is you're holding over there, they have skateboards. Now this is also, this can be wall art, or if you actually want to go skateboarding around mm -hmm. on it, it's ready to go. And Mike, you're showing off yeah. one of their genuine leather backpacks that they have with their little camo print that they got going on. It's, I mean, it's just cool stuff. I mean, this is all great for the new school year coming up. And they have, they have some deals, right? They for have back deals. To and you know, we mentioned it in the package, but just to reemphasize, you got, it's 15% off for the school year coming in. So you go in there, their shirts and all the different accessories they have are 15% okay. off. But the kicker, right? Da -da. Yeah. Kicker. It's joke day, right? Oh, hey, it's joke so day. Go. And they got exclusive Jordans, LeBrons, Kobe's. They also oh, have wow. some Yeezys out there, which makes it unique. You can't find that really anywhere here in San Antonio. We just walk in and have such a large collection right in front of you and easy to get to. And they buy, sell, and trade. So you can go in there. If you have a nice new pair of shoes that you, like, you yeah. want to go in there, you can trade them up for another new pair Fantastic. of shoes. Isn't okay. that cool? I love well, if you like more on uh, unique gifts, uh, make sure unique knits. Pardon me. Go to salive.com and click on the as seen on sa live tab. Thanks, Thanks David. Yeah, All right. Fantastic. I Coming love up, that little it's a really cool thing to do before the summer's over. We're going to tell you about an experience at SeaWorld where you can get up close and personal with stingrays, and it's more affordable than you think. Plus, some simple ways to make your life easier when school starts. School hacks that you will love a little bit later on. So, stay with us. Aquatica. We are in the water with stingrays right now. And Janelle Baca, aquarium supervisor, joins me. And folks can do this, right? They can book their time in the water with the stingrays, and it only costs $20 a person. It's a great deal. It's family friendly. You can have the whole family in here, you know, from the smallest toddler up to the oldest adult. We enjoy having all of our families come out and visit our wonderful exhibit with all of our cow nose stingrays and beautiful tropical fish. So they get to come in here, they can wade in just a little bit or they can come all the way out to about waist deep like we are right now. And I know folks might be thinking, really stingrays, isn't that dangerous? Stingrays kind of have a negative connotation and you kind of heard some myths or mm -hmm. things about them that might not be too fun, but you know what? Right here at SeaWorld and Aquatica, we make it a safe, friendly environment for our stingrays and for our guests. We actually do trim the barbs, which is where this, the name stingray comes from. It's a little stinger. It kind of looks like a, an arrow or a nail that protrudes from the back end of their body and they use that as a means of defense. So we are not harmful to them. We're actually their source of food. Um, <laughs> so they want to be nice to us and we're nice to them. And so there's no reason to be afraid to come out to K Ray Reef. Okay, these guys are very friendly and it might have something to do with what you're holding right there in your hand. What are we feeding them? So today we actually have a small little fish and this, got, this one's called a Peruvian smelt. We get a lot of different fish here, all restaurant quality. And so all we do is we just hold it under the surface of the water and a stingray swims over the top of our hand and they'll suck it right out. So they're kind of like the vacuum cleaners of the ocean. They're typically feeding on the bottom of the ocean floor. There we go, we got it! <laughs> you know, looking for things that they can uh, use their bony plates in their mouth to crush up and grind uh, things with a hard outer shell. So mollusks, so things like clams, scallops, um, but also like crabs and lobsters. So do you want to give it a shot? Sure. Okay, right. here we go. Nummy, nummy, nummy in the tummy, someone. Woo! There you go. 
Oh, he missed it. It's now it's on you. Someone's gonna get it. If it hits the ground, it doesn't matter, right? They're that's gonna get okay. it. That's yep. where they typically will that's eat right. it. And from. even some of the fish might come around and, and scoop it up too. Now their eyes on these the cow nose stingrays, they're on the side of their head and then are those their gills? The holes that you see are called spiracles. spiracles. So they're located right behind their eyes. Okay. And it is part of how they are breathing. The gills are actually there on the underside of their oh. body. So that when they're they're gliding through the sand, sifting through the sand, looking for food, they're still able to expel that sand potentially and water through the spiracles that are on the top sides of their body. So how long do these guys live? It's a great question. I would say typically anywhere 25 to 30 years would be an average range for them. Uh, a lot of actually some of these, uh, some of the smaller ones were actually born right here at SeaWorld. Okay. They're kind of like little puppies when they come up. Aren't you know, they? It, that's true. A lot of people. People refer to them as the puppies of the sea here. <laughs> and so folks can pet them on, on, on their back, mm -hmm. right? That's right. So they're silky smooth, as mm -hmm. you can probably oh, yeah. attest to. Yeah, very soft. Um, and they, they really enjoy this interaction with people. Hi. Um, and we enjoy providing that experience for our guests. So folks, if you want an incredible experience for an amazing price, just head on over to SeaWorld's Aquatica. You guys are open daily till August 27th and then open weekends through September 24th. So you can always head online to book the Stingray Encounter. For more information on all this, just head to our website, salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Too much fun. Remember, you get that $20 deal, of course, after you pay for your entry into the park. Back to school immunizations, why they're so important for your kids' health and where you can get them next. And cherish your child's first day of school, the personalized picture frame you can make. We're sharing some cute back to school crafts a little later on in the show. say live well the kids are heading back to school and now's the time to talk about the importance of immunizations joining us today one of our KSAC community partners uh, University Children's Health pediatrician Ryan Van Ramsworth yes right is that it right is here today and it's the middle of the summer right now but we're already talking about immunizations why is that important so as a pediatrician one of the most important things that I can do are make sure that my patients get their age-appropriate immunizations um, and for me it's all about creating a safe environment for kids to learn and uh, that means getting kids into get their vaccinations with their pediatrician and like you said it's already summer but it's going to be a very busy time so it's important to get those kids in for their appointments in a timely fashion. Now what are some of the important immunizations that parents should know about? So I always encourage parents to ask their pediatricians which vaccines are due. Um, for back to school I think of a couple different age ranges. I think of four-year-olds when they're going to be due for their MMR, measles, mumps, rubella, chicken pox, a tetanus booster and polio and then we think of 11 to 12 year olds as well who need a different set of vaccines. Okay yeah because I asked you earlier because I have a five-year-old, but she's good then, so she's clear. She until... should be good until she's 9, 10, or 11. Okay, but the four-year-old appointment is kind of the scary it's, one. It's challenging because <laughs> the child's old enough to know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. but it's still a very, very important visit to get those shots. Okay, so tell me, what is herd immunity? So I'm glad you brought that up. So, um, you know, it's important for all children to be vaccinated against vaccine-preventable diseases that we still see today. Um, herd immunity is a concept to where you need a certain percent of people to be vaccinated to protect people that can't receive immunizations, such as children who are going through chemotherapy for cancer and kids with weakened immune systems. So for herd immunity, we say 95% or thereabout of people need to be vaccinated to protect the community against those diseases. And so how does the hospital help with the process? I know it can be scary for parents to take their kids in. So it definitely can be scary for parents. Um, we um, have a cadre of wonderful pediatricians and pediatric providers that are really adept at having those conversations with the parents about what to expect, why vaccinations are so important, and all about back-to-school safety. Okay, and you have an event coming up, the Back to School Health Stop event. I think we can get that information on the screen Perfect. for you. So it's Friday the 18th from 8 a.m. to 12 at the Texas Diabetes Institute on South Zamora. So what can people expect here? It so it's going to be a back to school event. We'll not only have immunizations, we'll have opportunities for kids to get sports physicals, which is another very important back to school event for kids that yes. are going to play sports. And lots of community partners are going to be present as well. So it's a busy time. Busy for, time. For more information on University City Children's Health, you can call 210-358-5437 or you can go online to universitychildrenshealth.com.
Great information. All right, coming up, start school on the right foot with some back-to-school hacks that are going to save you some time. The tips and tricks right after the break. Stay with us. We're so excited to be teaming up with Go Public to highlight public school districts all around town. This school year, we start with SAISD, Cass Tech High School, Steel Montessori School, and Mark Twain Dual Language Academy are in the running. Now, you can vote right now by going to salive.com and click on the Cool School banner. Then you can pick the school that you want to win this month's Cool School. All you, or you only have one week to cast your vote, so make sure and head over to salive.com right now. Well, of course, school is either in full swing or you're gearing up for it. Some went back today and then Monday and the following Monday. So some great little things to make it easy because it can be kind of hectic, kind of, you know, frustrating and all that. Plus, you want to get in good with the teacher, right, Absolutely. Savannah? Savannah Absolutely. Savannah here. Absolutely. Summer sweet treats. And we're going to get to the hacks in a minute. But, you know, you, you got to remember teachers. So apple for the teacher, but... You're taking it up about five oh, notches Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a little something special today. Okay. We're going to do chocolate-covered Oreos that chocolate look like covered apples. Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that sound good? Just a little. All right. We're so take break a it open. Uh-huh. And a little. you don't. Whoops. Too much. No, no, no. That's okay. Oh, is that good? That's okay. okay. Yeah. So this is, this is red melted chocolate. Yes. Red chocolate. You can get it at any craft store. Okay. And you dip the, the little stick in there, and that uh -huh. acts kind of like the glue? Yes. Okay. So... Oh, you probably yours is going to be better than mine. You got more than I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Darn. I'll um, tip it forward for you. All right. And you just well, let's, slowly let's tip it this way this so the camera can see. Go it. ahead and, then and we're dip just that go in like there. This. Yeah, all the way in, all the way all in. The way there in. All you way go. In. Then Turn it. it. Oh, oh, it's falling apart. Hang on, hang on. I may have to just. Oh, you might have put too much. I may. Oopsie. <laughs> you dipped in. Well, the thing is, you put the. Um, we'll do another one. You put the red chocolate in there, and you let it kind of harden up just a little bit so it acts like that glue. Yeah. And then. You eat the mistakes, and so therefore you get rid of all the evidence, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Let's say we can do one more here. Oh, that's really good. Okay. And you've got your chocolate chips here for the mm -hmm. stem and your fondant leaves oh. for the leaf. Pop them in the freezer five minutes, mm -hmm. take them out. They pull right off of the parchment paper. Okay, red chocolate, where would you find that? Uh, any craft store. Walmart even, you can even find that Walmart, Joann's, Michael's. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also the little bags that you've wrapped them in. which Same place. Fantastic. Yeah. So you can, I mean, make these, if you want to give something to the um, the secretary in the office at school or something like that. Oh, yeah. Make a whole bunch of them, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Put them on a cookie sheet, stick them in the freezer. All right. Um, school lunches. You know, we've been talking about some healthy lunches and all that, but you want to keep it cold. And you said your daughter likes... Loves fresh, fresh fruit, but they got to be cold. They, you got to keep it cold when they're okay. when they're in room temperature. They're not always good for them. They don't even want to eat them. You get sent back home with them. You get so those, this, okay, you get those freezer packs, and you know you put it in the freezer just wrong, and then they're going to be kind of wadded up into a little ball or something like that. But a great idea is to just take a regular kitchen sponge, mm -hmm. soak it, don't wring it out. And you said this one's been sitting out. It's still... It's still pretty hard. Yeah. It's been out for about three hours. And once it thaws, all the water's going to stay in the sponge, basically. Absolutely. And just keep it in there. And if need be, you make a little mess, you got a sponge right there. <laughs> you just reuse this. Keep refreezing it mm -hmm. every single day. Exactly. And just pop it in. Exactly. And, is, and if you need to cut it to a specific size, a sponge is very easy to cut. Oh, yeah. Cut it in fours. You got four kids. You got four ice packs. Great idea. Perfect. And you can buy those things for just a dime a dozen, basically, at oh, the yeah. store. All right. Four little ones putting the shoes on. Sometimes you can't figure out which is left and which is right. Especially for our kindergartners and our pre-Ks that are just now going into school. Yes, you can use letters, but what a great idea. And if you can look right down in the shoe, are we on that camera? See that little flower sticker in there? Well, she had a great idea. You take a sticker and cut it in half. Yeah, that way they know uh, which way they go on. And any sticker, any symmetrical butterfly, a happy face, like you said, mm -hmm. an L and an R. But in case they don't know their left and their right yet, they'll know that the picture does go together. Now, are there certain stickers that are better for shoes because... You know, I like the butterfly. But I mean, as far and the as flowers. The, the stick them in there. Because, oh, no, you know, no, no. Any, kids... any, any kind of sticker. And you get the pack. That way, in case they come off, they rub off with their shoes. Just put another one on there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Doing little lady's hair sometimes can be, well, it's like, what do you do? You want to do a ponytail? You want to... It's very time consuming in the morning, especially when you have a daughter like mine with long hair and there's just long, so many different things to do. Okay. So what's the trick here? Uh, my trick is a hair schedule. Mondays, you've got ponytails. 
Uh, Tuesdays, you've got pigtails. Wednesdays, you've got French braids. Thursday, you can do a bun. And Friday, uh, Friday's fun. It's Wednesday. I don't know how to first it's, break. It's, to yeah, well, we're going to do a ponytail. We're going to do a bun for her. A bun. Uh, okay. We're going to do a bun. And you can pick out any bow uh, you like. Okay. So what do you, you we twist it up like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Am, am I doing it right, Tam? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Just yes, continue. Taya, yes, Yes. <laughs> and then go around. All the way around. And around. Uh, and we'll do a green bow. And around. There you go. And then clip take that a in. Bow. And if you wanted to, you could color coordinate and say, okay, green is going to be the bun on Wednesday. You could. Yeah, you absolutely could. Green. Okay. And on and Fridays, I like, like to this. do for fun, let her pick out a bow on her own. Oh, okay. And then you go like that. Don't. Don't move. <laughs> move. Okay, wait. Ready? It worked it, before we it went did. on. It did. <laughs> Here, give me your hand real quick. Go like this. Put your hand right like that. You got to stay like that. All the way through school, Tab. Okay. <laughs> Your bun will stay put if you don't move. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Too bad she's she's so shy. She, she is. Ex yeah. <laughs> Savannah Ashley, if you'd like more information and some of her great recipes, she's got some great stuff there. And actually, how to maybe put hair up in a bun like that to make it stay. Go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Thank you also, Taya. You can let go of your bun you, here. Yeah, <laughs> thank right. you, Mike. Coming up, we asked you earlier, knock-knock jokes. What's your favorite knock-knock joke? They are excited. Knock-knock. Who's there? Harry. Harry who? Harry up and open the door. We love it. Keep them coming. Thank you, Steve. How often should it be done? Well, it's just like your car. I mean, you know, you have your oil changed, you have your filters changed, you have your tires checked. Same thing with an air conditioning unit. You got to have at least checked. Uh, we recommend twice a year. Heating system checked one time, air conditioning checked uh, the other time of the year. It doesn't have to be exactly in those months, but it's important to have it checked during those, I call those important months of the year. And we have an image of kind of a before and after. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, what you're looking at on that is on the, the one on, on the screen that says before. That's typically what a unit looks like after the winter's over. So we've had all the pollen, all the whole year that we've had with dust and things that are in there, leaves, and they get sucked into those outside coils. This is typically an outside unit here, and it shows how dirty it is. And then, of course, the other picture is after you have it serviced, why is this important? The way the unit works is it sucks air through those coils to change the temperature of the refrigerant to send it back into the house. And that's how you exchange that energy and that heat from the inside to the outside of the house. I see. And I think we have another picture that, that kind of shows that just, just a bit. So what needs to be done? I mean, you know, like if, if you had to put them in, you know, a, a hierarchy. You well, know? you know, a lot of times people don't know there's, there's different components to the system. So you have an outside system uh -huh. unit, which is called the condensing unit, indoor coil, and then there's either an air handler or or a unit that's moving the air in there. So there's those three components. Right. So what we need to do is make sure the outside unit is clean so that the air can flow through that unit the way it needs to. Of course, on the indoor, if you've been changing your filters, <laughs> we're not going to have any problems. Right. The indoor coil usually will stay clean if you've been changing. Now, if you haven't changed your filters, you're usually in trouble. So those, that's one of the common mistakes that yes. people make is, is changing their filters and how often they do that. What are some other common mistakes that, that they make? Well, another thing, usually when you don't change your filters, you're getting that dirt sucked into the unit. So right. then what happens with that is your drains get stopped up. It starts backing up inside the house, which then floods the house, which then messes up the whole house. Yeah. Or maybe you didn't have the unit flushed out. There's a drain pipe on that thing. And just like any other drain pipe, if it's not cleaned out, it backs up into the house and you have issues inside the house with water. What sounds should, should trigger you that something might be awry? Well, I think about, about to go really wrong. Usually on the outside, it's hard to tell <laughs> right. what's going on outside. It's just a noisy machine sometimes. Right. Some of the newer machines are a lot more quiet. Mm -hmm. But in, inside, if, if you hear uh, some clacking noises, you hear some squeaking noises, you hear different things like that inside the house, that's typically a sign that there's something going to happen uh, inside your, your, or, you know, you're, you're noticing that it, you, the unit comes on, then it stops and you get hot, but the unit outside still running. There's typically probably a fan going outside the house. Okay. And that's when they need to call you right away, right, in which they right. probably should have called you earlier and they right. prevented right. that. So what services do the buyer boys offer? Well, we offer, uh, different types of plans. We call them our comfort plans. And basically what we offer is two times a year, we'll come out and check your unit. 
Easy way to do that, you can do monthly for like $15 or you can do the whole year for like $180, and that gives you two complete inspections, make sure everything's working in both, both seasons that we usually go through. Right. And you know, it's like anything, preventive is preventive. We're gonna save some time that you're not being broken down when you have that big family function at your house, and I know you have an upcoming wedding, so you would love for nobody to be hot when they come over to that event. That's right, yes. yeah, sometimes I already feel kinda hot, that's because it's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> nothing to do with my AC. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you have your own personal moment, I understand those things, yes. All right, for more information on the fire boys you can call 656-9027 that's 656-9027 or head to buyerboys.com all right get in the back to school spirit with these simple crafts you can make with the kids and tomorrow on SA Live, make your study pod a personalized hot spot for your school needs. How to dress up your child's desk area without breaking the bank. That's tomorrow at 1. Love. Welcome back to Back to School Week on SA Live. Well, hey, you want to go to the top of the class on your social networking sites on the first day of school? This is how you're going to do it by creating some really fun crafts for the first day of school. Isn't that cute? Mariana Sanchez and her youngest, Justin, is here to show us some really fun crafts that we're going to be doing. Now, Justin, you are five, right? Five years old, going into kindergarten. When is his first day? His first day is in two weeks, next Monday. Are you excited? Yeah? Okay, and I love his bow tie. Very, very dapper. Thank you. Yeah, we make bow ties as well. Um, his bow tie is kind of his signature look, so I make bow ties, and then I also do hair um, hair bows for girls as well. Um, just something we do for fun. Very, very cute. Okay, so we started out with this really cute kind of, you know, selfie picture frame. Right. Let's show folks how to do it. Let's talk about what they need first, because you can make this whole thing for how much? So I made this for three dollars and fifty cents. Okay. So I'm a single mom. I've always done things on a budget, and I'm big on having fun on a budget as well. So what you need is just a a foam board, which you can get at Walmart, mm -hmm. um, two boxes of the 24 count of crayons, and um, I got this scrapbook paper, and I just, you can cut them, or you can buy pre-cut letters too at Walmart, but I just find it easier to cut them, and one thing that's really fun for the kids is letting them pick out the paper. That way, they're really involved in the project as well. So, all together, this was $3.50. So what you do is you, I measure it four inches. Okay, across. And, right, mm -hmm. and I just cut it with the box cutter. Mm -hmm. And um, it, you don't really have to worry about the imperfections because the crayons will cover that. And then you just line all of this with crayons and I do it with a hot glue gun. Just be careful not to get burnt like I did. And then afterwards, you're going to glue the letters to the top portion, but be sure when you glue it that you glue it to the paper, because if you glue it accidentally on the crayon portion, the wax will melt. Okay, so, all right, so you wanna make sure you get it right on the, the paper itself. Okay. Right. Oh, okay, and then you just kinda line it, and you have, of course you can personalize this however you want, right? Exactly, so my son, he really, he's into Superman, so I got some Superman stickers that we can put, and he loves Batman as well. <laughs> He's, he's, he's going to remind you that he <laughs> likes Batman too. <laughs> um, so you can personalize it. The kids can actually draw on this themselves to make it exactly how they want it. Love it. Okay, so we'll put that right here. And we've got another project. This one is for the teachers, right? Yes. So every year I always, I want to do something for the teachers because they work so hard. And I want to do something at the beginning of the year to start the year off on a, a good note. Um, so you can really, you can get too much lotion, stuff that people normally get for the teachers. So I wanted to do something functional that they'll use all year long. So I did a school supplies cake. And I love that this is only $7.50. Yes, there's okay. tricks to that. Okay, okay, so good. What are those tricks? <laughs> right now, look at Office Depot. They have something called penny deals. Mm -hmm. So I got the glue right now is a penny. Um, the pencil boxes are a penny. Um, and at times they'll have the crayons for a penny as well. So you spend $5 and you get 
certain things for a penny. Oh my gosh, I love that. So you can get all like multiple ones for a penny? It's or a limit it of three. Limit of three. That's still not bad if you're building a, a whole cake. Okay. All right. So how do we start? What's your base? So I wanted it to be elevated. So okay. I got this little tin and you can really um, customize it too. You can write the teacher's name. You can get the children to put stickers on it. And in the tin, I put glue sticks. Uh, you can also fill it with kisses, like the Hershey kisses, mm -hmm. um, just like a little sweet treat. Okay. And on top of the tin, you're going to put the Clorox disinfectant. Oh, I see. So like that? Right. Okay. So that's your base. Okay. So that's how it starts. Right. Mm -hmm. And then just real quickly, you're going to put kind of everything around you uh, at the base and the middle part here, and you can kind of stand things right here yes. on, on the side of the tin. You can use tape or... You could do, use rubber bands, right? either or, and then you just can wrap with school color ribbon, right? Yes. All I right. chose these colors because they were my son's colors. Also, don't be afraid to get the hot glue gun and kind of glue the glue sticks. I'm sure the teachers will not mind. It still works all the same. And such a cute presentation. <laughs> Great stuff from local mom, Mariana Sanchez. Thank you so much for being here for all these crafts and more. Just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. You guys have a, you have a blog, right? Yes. Yeah, so we just started a new blog ready to show my What's love. Friday. Knock, knock. Who's there? Who? Who, who? Aw, here's a tissue. Don't cry. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm loving these corny knock, knock jokes. Rachel says, knock, knock. Who's there? Butter. Butter who? Butter not tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, knock, knock. Oh, here we go. Who's there? A broken pencil. A broken pencil who? Never mind. It's pointless. <laughs> Okay, That's I like a great that. great one. <laughs> Another one. Uh, medical humor. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hippa. Hippa who? Yeah, I can't tell you that. <laughs> oh, very good. That's a great one. I need to remember that one. Great job, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're coming up tomorrow, a father-daughter story that couldn't be any cuter, and this one is just in time for Back to School. All right, we'll see you tomorrow at 1 right here. Have a good National Joke Day. Go tell those knock-knock jokes. <laughs>